Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Game Kale. My name is Naveed, aka Barely Average Gamer. Today we have an amazing guest with us today. Before we get into her introduction, I just want to thank all the previous guests that we've had. So the last interview we conducted was with uh, Joshua Kuick and uh, Luke Duffy, who are currently running Brawler Bash League. Uh, you can definitely check out that interview if uh, that's something that you would like to see. Also, uh, I would really appreciate I really appreciate the support that we've gotten on the channel so far. Um, you've been uh, very active on our Facebook page as well, especially with the interview that we had with King Sunny. So I really appreciate uh, everyone taking out the time to watch these, uh, these interviews. And uh, speaking of interviews, we have a lovely guest here today, Miss Ayala. Uh, something I would like to share with all of you, uh, and that's really special to me, is the fact that when I started uh, watching Twitch or really uh, got the hang of how Twitch works because Twitch is not a really uh, famous platform in Pakistan. So initially I was uh, aligned in uh, aligned with various UFC uh, four leagues or UFC three leagues at that time. And uh, after that I was like, okay, so beyond uh, streaming of UFC four, what else is out there? And the first thing I saw was something that was really engaging to me. Uh, there was a thing called Marbles on Stream. And uh, uh, after crossing a few streams, I came across someone named Miss Ayala, and I was definitely captivated by her wholesome presence. And right then and there, I knew that this is the channel that I wanted to subscribe. So uh, she is actually the first Hello. person I've ever subscribed to on Twitch. Uh, she has content. Um, she streams a lot of video games. Um, both, uh, I think she. Uh, she. Uh, I think you're involved with first-person shooters. I've seen you do. Um, we were third person shooters as well, uh, different community based games. So she's really active in that circle. Um, and again, she is an experienced streamer. Um, the links of her uh, social media will be shared in the comments below. Uh, Miss Ayala, welcome to the stream. How are we doing today? Hi, everybody. I am absolutely honored. Thank you so much for, first off, just inviting me to this conversation to talk about mental health and streaming and just the kind of issues and the type of things that I've encountered in it. And as well as I think it's really awesome that again, you came through on Twitch and I was the first person that you subscribed to that. To me, I didn't, I don't remember if I knew that, but I was just like, oh, that's so sweet. That's so precious. Oh, thank you. I'm blushing. <laughs> I'm doing great though. And I'm excited to go through the rest of this interview process with you. Yeah. Um, in terms of starting this channel, uh, I, you were someone that I definitely wanted on board. And I believe the topic that we are going to go in depth on uh, is something that uh, I believe you are very passionate about as a feminist, as, uh, as a person in the streaming community, as a person who believes in equal rights. So um, I believe this interview is going to resonate with a lot of female viewers that are going to watch this today. Uh, so again, thank you for taking out the time and uh, 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 I think we can proceed with the first question that we have for you today. So yeah. before, any, uh, before we get started on the subject, uh, how did you get into streaming? Because uh, for you, I believe you've been doing this for a very long period of time. So can you just give us a rundown of how you got into this? Yeah, um, actually, so I started streaming back in 2013. I started watching people on Twitch in 2012. I actually was looking for a YouTube video. I was playing Minecraft at the time. I was looking for a video on how to build a certain thing. And I found that YouTube video. And in the description, it said, oh, if you like my YouTube video, you can watch me live and speak with me. And I was like, what, is, what does that mean? Like live? So at that point I had clicked on that link and I still remember the exact person, his name is Fans crafter and he's obviously a minecrafter um and he just reminded me of my dad super wholesome down to earth talking with everybody in chat just super excited to see anybody to hang out with everybody and also spread the word about how gaming is for all ages because a lot of people also assume that it's mainly just for kids who want to waste time and not really do anything productive with their life so to have his kind of perspective on how gaming has affected him and how he got into streaming really inspired me to be like hey like I could try this out too and see if I like it because I've been gaming and going to computer gaming cafes every weekend with my dad. So I've been kind of involved with the gaming community for a really long time now. That's great to know. Uh, all right, so I, we can dive into the topic a little is, um, that we've uh, actually discussed previously. Um, so I believe with the advent of technology, um, a lot of different people have been able to gain access to how um, digital media works, how uh, streaming works. And 
for that reason, including the connection that we've been able to make, me sitting all the way across Pakistan, about 12 hours, uh, the time difference. Uh, yeah. that, that's created a lot of access and a lot of um, inclusivity. However, at the same time, considering the fact that a lot of people are not necessarily aware of rampant sexism that is uh, a part of uh, the gaming, uh, gaming community, or a lot of sexism that female streamers face. So um, I would just want to gain some perspective as to what uh, your experiences have been uh, recently or perhaps in the last couple of years and how have you been dealing with that? Yeah, so as a female streamer, and this goes to kind of just in general in society, we're still looked up as kind of objects or things to please, not, not much more, I'm gonna restart what I'm saying there. Um, as a female and just in the female society, we're still looked upon as tools and objects, not actual as human beings and respected for our personalities and what we can bring to the table. So it, that translates also into video gaming, into streaming. A lot of people are have different conceptions of what female streamers are, saying that they have advantages because of their attractiveness, of their appeal, or saying that they're only gaining you know, viewers or gaining community because of being a female, which I would say is mostly untrue. If you look at the top of the Twitch list, most of them, the top 10, just maybe one or two girls, everyone else are males. So that's still a common misconception that, oh, it's easier to stream if you're a girl. It's absolutely not because we do deal with the flack of people coming in and trolling, making comments about your appearance, about your weight, about your gameplay. And let me be clear, your gameplay, Gameplay can be 100%. You could be the, the top player in the lobby, in the community. You can be an expert in it. You can be even a person who does interviews and hosts you know, events with esports communities. And you will still get that type of flack saying, oh, you only got that position because you're a female. When in reality, they had to do the hard work. And as a female, it's unfortunately about to do time and a half when it comes to the hard work compared to men who get treated and respected upfront for like us as women we have to kind of work harder to prove that which i am seeing changes now in the industry that the awareness is coming and spreading so it, hopefully sooner rather than later it starts becoming a little bit more of an equal ground because i do encounter that a lot especially when i'm playing video games in general even if i'm playing for example if i was playing a first person shooter and i would be the person with the most kills i would be the person giving call outs to my teammates some people uh, would just be mad at me. Even my teammates, they would be, they would shut me out. They would mute me. They would call me horrible slurs, insults, etc., sexist things, and it just absolutely makes no sense. And go to the other side if you, if you have a bad game, which everyone ends up having a bad game eventually, um, then that just kind of magnifies on how the insults can come in towards you specifically if you are a female gamer in this industry. So. The way that I deal with it personally has been having, unfortunately, to have tough skin towards it. Um, it really comes towards understanding where the other person's coming from. They are coming from an insecure standpoint. And if you are going to be exposing yourself to scenarios of dealing with toxic and insecure people, I really do highly recommend practicing self-love and practicing um, your understanding of who you are as a person and not allowing anybody else to demean your worth as a person. And that is the biggest thing, not even in gaming, but the biggest thing in general in life that can kind of be the, the barrier between how people can demolish you or bring you down and how you can protect yourself from that. And also maybe, like you said, bring some wholesome, bring some positivity, bring some optimism and maybe switching up people's perspectives on it. I have encountered actually a really good friend of mine now. He's been a good friend of mine for maybe three or four years, but he first initially came to my stream because I was a female and he was just trying to troll me. He was trying to get me to be hateful, to ban him, to, you know, just get in any reaction, whatever reaction it is. And he thought the easiest way to do that was with a negative um, perspective. And I actually took the time to talk to him and I was like, hey, it sounds like you're going through some things. I hope that things get better. I know that these comments and insults that you're reflecting upon me is actually not about me at all. It's something that's internal towards you. And he kind of took a second and then he came back the next day. I thought he disappeared. It's like, oh, he didn't get the negative tension. He's gone. But actually the next day he came, he's like, I really kind of sat down and thought about what you said. And you're right. I apologize for the way I behaved. And that kind of grew that 
open door. It's sometimes you just need one person to be able to open that door for you to say something nice to remind you that people do care regardless of if they're a stranger or not. And they can actually help influence change. And so, like I said, now he's a good friend of mine, three or four years. He practices a lot of meditation. He's about self-love and building that. So every time I do see it, he uplifts other people in his life too. So that's also how, that's kind of like the things I've encountered and the things that I've kind of dealt with. Obviously it wasn't easy the first few years of being exposed to public, but that's what happens when you are a streamer. And there are ways that are, there are best decisions to make to hopefully influence it for a better result. Um, thank you so much for sharing that. I believe, um, again, it, it kind of boils down to the conversation that I've had with a few streamers that you really have to have a tough skin, but I, I don't think that's necessarily the responsibility of a streamer to have. I think um, audiences perhaps at this point in time are not that considerate uh, in when it comes to practicing mindfulness and uh, really understanding what needs to be said and what is inappropriate at that uh, point in time. But at the same time, I believe um, there is, um, there is a, there's definitely greater activism and awareness in recent times. Uh, so what do you think? Um, do you think people have become more mindful when it comes to sexism in recent times? Yeah, I definitely do see more people standing up and protecting others when boundaries are crossed, which is amazing because we know the bystander effect where you see and witness somebody getting harassed or abused and nobody says anything versus now it's, slowly changing where especially females will uplift and support others and help protect anyone who's getting that kind of flag. But I also see from all other ends and all other type of spectrums of other people um, saying, hey, that's not right. That's not good. And the more that we get people who at least speak up about it, it's going to influence the next action item, which is speaking up about it and then doing something about it. And as we continue going through that cycle and it becomes more and more common, it's going to com become common enough that hopefully those trolls, those harassers, et cetera, are going to weed themselves out and not be a part or accepted and that are tolerated in this community. And I feel, really feel like that would be great for everyone. So we've discussed a few things about the audiences that end up coming on the channel. Most of them definitely having a positive vibe about themselves. And unfortunately, some of them uh, not, not in that category. Uh, when we talk about the community in general, the community of streamers, what do you see um, happening there? Do you, do you experience similar sort of experiences with sexism over there as well, or the community is more accepting towards female streamers? Yeah, I would actually, I would have, to, I would actually have to say the type of community that you interact with is going to be the same same type of community of streamers you're going to interact with. So there's always going to be those people who are kind of um, secluded to themselves that have that mindset of, oh, females aren't allowed in the circle versus being in a different part of streamer community where they have open arms and are willing to accept people from all areas of life. So personally, I've only focused on that, finding people that I resonate with that have the same mindset as me. I know that the others do exist. Um, and unfortunately, sometimes they're more apparent because the more toxicity and the more people that they grow in their community, the bigger that chunk and attention that they withhold within the community. But I don't even like to give them attention or speak with about them or be involved with them because the more attention you give to it, the more that you feed to it versus being able to look around and see, hey, this is the type of streamer I wanna connect with and I wanna make friends with. And that's the biggest difference between networking that I personally experience is I interact with people who I want to interact with that are on the same level and energy and forward thinking mindsets that I am on versus where other people will kind of treat it like the dog eat dog world and just befriend people and make those fake relationships just so they can get to the next step of the career path. So both of them do exist. And at this point, I think they're always going to exist, but it's a matter of which one do you want to contribute to? Which one do you want to be a part of? That is all up to you. That is, you can, if you don't find what you like, there's always going to be another option available. Yeah, I believe um, there has to be a certain level of reciprocity uh, in, in that and that relation that you're supposed to have. Because uh, again, uh, a lot of times uh, people tend to believe that if a streamer is approaching you or if they're uh, coming to your stream or having a conversation with you, there is an end game towards uh, uh, that conversation or maybe they're, they're trying to take advantage of your cloud or 
uh, something similar to that. So um, I I believe it has it has it kind of boils down to reciprocity at the end of the day. Um, I agree. The thing that I would uh, want to ask you, uh, especially when it comes to an uneven playing field for female and male streamers, what do you think are the difference between the challenges a female streamer has to kind of go through as compared to a male streamer? Yeah, um, I think I touched on it a little bit before. The female streamers have to get over that initial hump of just being there to gain attention as a female. So using their body, using everything else in that category and i want to say personally that i have no problem with that type of content with people pursuing that with women pursuing that it's just there's different type of communities and just different viewerships and audiences for every single thing and most people are not comfortable with exposing their bodies or using that type of you know attraction to get the communities so the initial hump is kind of separating yourself from that and making your making your personality, making your gameplay, making your stream and content stand out that is out of that stigma. I, again, have no issue with it. I support I support people who want to make the content because if there's people watching it, that means the market wants it. So somebody needs to do it. And, and vice versa, the, they, there's people that want female streamers who are gamers, who are part of the community, who are wholesome, who are et cetera, et cetera. Those, they're both good and equal. It's just a matter of, Unfortunately, women have to go through that, thick, that stigma and have to go through that hump. So that's a reoccurring problem. I think I touched on it as well as females just needing to be able to do their best to keep the boundaries. Um, like I said, even if you are established in the community, if you're established as a gamer, a streamer, etc., there are people who are going to kind of test that and push that and see like, oh, can I get away with this comment? And can I get away with that comment? Because there's a lot of people who are seeking type of attention that comes in towards romance and attraction. So that is, and not to say that it doesn't happen to male streamers either. I'm sure that, you know, the thirst trapping and all of that type of deal still exists. Uh, I just feel like it's more prominent in females that, hey, I see a female, she's cute. Let me see if I can get her number. Let me see if I could slide in her DMs. That is a very, very reoccurring problem. I feel like more, more so for females than males. So we have to do and implement protocols that can help prevent that. For example, already pre-banning words that happen to be inappropriate, that things you don't want to see in the chat, as well as, you know, sectioning off your DMs so people can't just send you a message out of nowhere. There are things that have to be put in place that I don't think males even think about until later down the line. So that is one of the biggest hurdles but I feel like once you get that established and you understand how people can come and try to harass you or to manipulate you the better that you are and the more confident you are as a streamer and it comes very apparent in your stream and your content that you create thank you so much for sharing that I believe a lot of female uh, streamers watching this are going to benefit from the, uh, from, from, from what you've just mentioned and uh, again for for a lot of people it, it becomes very difficult to cope with these circumstances and uh, it gets really difficult at times but at the same time if you uh, are mindful of your experiences and you realize that what they're projecting is uh, their own mindset rather than what they feel or think of you so I think acceptance becomes much more easier uh, wouldn't you think yeah, I agree. I agree. I think at least from my personal experience, females take tend to be super empathetic. And on top of that, that leads into, unfortunately, believing everything that is said to them. So if somebody insults them, they take that to heart. And I, I don't want to go into the, the, the realm of saying you have, a, you have to have tough skin. It's just a matter of understanding boundaries and realize where people start and where people end. And they should be ending when they try to make a conversation piece about you. They try to insult you. It is That's where the boundary and the line is drawn where, it, hey, this is not going to affect me. This is not about me. This is about them trying to attack me. And I'm just not going to accept that. I'm not going to tolerate that or allow that in my life. And I don't get me wrong. I do get certain scenarios where it still kind of hurts a little bit. And, and when you when that does happen, you want to make sure you take the time to step back. There's always going to be scenarios that you need to kind of rest and you need to reflect and you kind of have to kind of understand where you feel about things. You have to be especially emotionally in tune with what your body is, how like what your body's telling you, how your mind is reacting to things. Because sometimes we just, 
we are human, we react and sometimes we just can't help it. So before I recommend, before anything bad, before you react in a way that you don't want to, take the time to pause. So if it is like ending your stream or muting your stream, turning off your camera, taking a break, whatever it may be, take those precautions that you need to protect yourself. Because at the end of the day, you are the most important thing ever. Like each individual person, you should prioritize yourself and your health and your happiness. And if something's affecting it, then you take the time to relax and kind of understand what's going on before moving forward into a scenario that could possibly test that happiness and that health of yours. Great, thanks for that. Uh, and I think that, um, that was probably going to echo what you were mentioned earlier about insecurities of male gamers. There yeah. research that was done on Halo gamers that um, in, in different, uh, what would you call them? I think in different lobbies, um, they've, they've noticed that low skill male players are hostile towards uh, female players, uh, also or female voice players uh, who are highly skilled. And that's kind of in tune with evolutionary psychology because what they also noticed, the researchers that, that is, uh, that for men who were highly skilled, were at, were at ease and at comfort with having a female gamer who is skilled alongside them and they wanted them to be successful uh, alongside them. But for uh, male gamers who, again, were lesser skilled, thought they were going to lose their dominance if they wouldn't say something wild or they don't, they quote unquote, put them in their place. Um, I believe you've experienced that quite a few times. And uh, if you would want to expand on that, uh, what do you think uh, really goes down, uh, or at least in your perspective, what goes through the minds of those uh, individuals? Yeah, uh, I definitely have experienced this often and I still do. And it's going to be a recurring problem until, you know, society as a whole changes. But it's funny that you mentioned that specific research because I did read that research paper and the results of that. And it also became kind of viral on Twitter between like the feminist community. So it is a very real thing and we have statistics now to prove it. And if you are experiencing it, you're not alone. Uh, what I personally believe is, okay, if you think about it as like horizon, like here's a level of, you know, basic security, right? Everybody at least starts at even if they're just starting at the game. If you're talking about the same skill level, we're on this level. And like you said, if there is somebody at a higher skill level, they'll be above. And if someone who has a higher skill level or lower skill level, they're going to be below. And initially, when it comes to, you know, more insecure players or lower skilled males, and specifically as we're talking about, they're going to perceive themselves as lower than the average. So anybody even a, a step above them or even like at the no neutral normal level above them, they're going to want to tear themselves down because they don't believe that they have the ability to step up. So if they, the way that we look at it is, hey, they have the mindset, hey, they're doing better than me. They're progressing more than I am. Let's take them down. So that way I can feel better about myself. It is totally about the emasculation portion where they feel like they're losing their dominance. They feel like they're losing their sense of self-worth because somebody is better than them. And they see female specifically even less worth. So the fact that a female is doing better than them, they're going to even react more negatively and more toxic towards that because they don't believe that, for example, a girl should be better than them. And like you said, if you have the confidence in yourself, you have the confidence in your gameplay, you will want to support your teammates. You want to support people and females to succeed because they're, they're there to help you. You guys are part, this is a team game generally when that type of stuff happens, like in Halo. So it really comes down to a different mindset of how secure they are and their ego and what tools that they try to look at in order to build somebody up versus destroying them and Unfortunately, it's easier to access that based on their upbringing or their mindset. I, I can't comment too much about, about that personally, but it, it is still very apparent in the communities. Uh, there's one thing that um, you're very passionate about and that is self-love as you've mentioned earlier. And, and that's something that I, whenever I go on Twitch, that's the first thing I see. And that's one thing that I, 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 I automatically have some sort of uh, uh, affinity with it. like if I need my daily dose of positivity I know where to go to so, oh, that's so sweet. Um, Thank you. yeah c uh, coming on that topic uh, mental health again is something that is very close to your heart and um, as a streamer as someone who's been at it for a very long period of time uh, a lot of stress comes with and also uh, while uh, you're streaming you're also pursuing 
different other opportunities, other uh, career opportunities, so to say. So how do you maintain that work-life balance? How do you maintain uh, your mental well-being? So for someone like you, how do you go about that? Yeah, you know, that's a really, really, really difficult question. I think personally, I take it as I go and I check in with myself as I kind of try to build a certain schedule the schedule could be completely askew because of a bad mental health day of anxiety, of social um, anxiety, et cetera, or I have whatever it may be with a bad mental health day, it can get my schedule all over the place and my goals feel like they're moving farther away. And I realized that I was punishing myself for having a bad mental health day. No, you have a bad mental health day, it happens. And what you have to do is at least the way that I started looking and how I started balancing it is looking at myself as a little kid again. If I was the parent of this little kid myself, would I harass them? Would I punish them for not being able to do something because they were hurting, they weren't feeling good? No, I would support them and try to tell them like, okay, what can we do? How can we move forward from the situation? How can I help you? And part of that self-love and part of that mental health is checking in with yourself and understanding where you're at currently. So for me, balance is still a very delicate line. I am trying my best to still kind of determine what's the best formula for me. But I think at the end of the day, the formula changes depending on how you feel. There isn't any set schedule of people, people's mental health when it comes to especially for me personally, I deal with depression and anxiety. So those can totally throw me off. And if we go to neurodivergency and I have ADHD, there are people who are neurotypical who don't even deal with these problems, who can have those set schedules. So I don't want to say personally, what works for me is going to work for everybody. And I also don't want to say like I am a therapist in any sense of form, but I do want to say that the balance happens once you talk to yourself and you realize, hey, I have enough energy to be able to do this today. I have enough energy to do that. I can't do that because I have, I, don't have enough energy. So it's kind of setting your priorities and then also seeing, okay, energy bucket, what can I spend this energy on? It's kind of almost like a video game in the sense of like, okay, here's what I'm working with. I wake up every day and I'm like, here's the things that I have to do that I want to accomplish. And here is how I'm feeling today with the energy that I'm having. What can I realistically accomplish? And ideally I would like to be able to get to a point where it's not just daily, it's weekly. And then it's, you know, monthly and then yearly, but I'm taking it slow. I'm still struggling and trying to find that balance for myself. I definitely feel like the biggest and best way to approach that is trying to understand your kind of your energy levels and your focus levels and seeing where you're at because you can't just, you can brute force things, push yourself through things. Um, but dealing with those type of things when it comes to depression and anxiety and dealing with harassment from other people, sometimes you, you need to kind of take a step back and realize, hey, this isn't working for me, or hey, I need to focus on something else. So to answer your question, but not really answer your question, I'm finding my balance every day. Yeah, uh, so my take on this would be the fact that uh, you have gone through the process of understanding your own emotions and processing them in a way which is actually productive and understanding like you said, energy levels that you have at different times of the day. So I think having a good understanding of how your psyche or how your uh, mental health or physical health works, it's really important to compartmentalize uh, things based on that. And uh, again, this, this is one thing that I've appreciated about you is the fact that you have not been, you've unapologetically been an advocate of mental health uh, for everyone that's a part of your community. So again, I really appreciate the fact that you've uh, opened up and s spoken about that. Um, yeah. Thank uh, you. One more thing that uh, I would like to ask you before we uh, end this interview. Uh, so again, we talked about uh, sexism that's out there in, in the community through streamers and through gamers. What do you think it's going to take at least on uh, in the streamers community in order to combat this? How do you think uh, we can create better awareness? Because a lot of times people are, um, have, uh, are, I wouldn't say ignorant, but they probably haven't had someone to have those uh, uh, conversations with. So what do you think needs to happen in order to create better awareness and maybe get people to understand that uh, sexism isn't really uh, something that we want to proceed moving forward? Yeah. I 
I love this topic. And I, I think the biggest answer is representation, having more females available to be able to speak up from their perspective. We can definitely educate males and other people about the strifes and struggles that we go through, but they're not gonna be able to speak on it and as genuinely and as passionately as women. And like I said, if you look at the top 10 streamers, there's maybe one or two females on there. So the balance of that is really in favor of males. The more that we have females and the more that people we have standing up for them, like I mentioned earlier, is going to kind of propel the movement forward of ending sexual uh, sexist. But it's going to be a long process because this has, like you said, this has been a, a problem of ignorance throughout society, throughout centuries. It goes way beyond us. It's more than generations and generations of misconceptions and perspectives and mindsets towards females, particularly talking about sexism. So the biggest thing, again, is just trusting females when they say that they're dealing with things, um, representing them, advocating for them, rooting for them, supporting them. The fact that I'm in this interview, you thought of me and you speak so highly of me and it means so much to me. The fact that you're doing that is helping push towards having more females be accepted and also allowing the representation is more, so important because the fact that I'm here, what happens if another female sees this and like, hey, maybe I can pursue this. Like I see somebody else doing it. Why not me too? Versus if they don't see anybody who's like them doing something that they want to do, they're going to be afraid. They're going to think that, hey, I can't do it because I haven't seen anyone like me do it whether it be female, whether it be Filipino, which is what I am, whether it be whatever it may be, if I don't see somebody do it before them, what's going to give me the audacity to try to pursue it myself? And so somebody has to be the, somebody has to be the pioneer in it. Somebody has to take the stand. Someone has to stand up there and be like, this is not okay. I'm going to try to make this better. And the more people that we have and the more people that continue to grow into that, I'm getting super emotional. Um, the more people that continue to advocate for that, and the more people that we see do that, we're going to recruit people behind us who want to be a part of it, who think that it's right, who believe in it's right. So it will happen. Just you're a clear example of that today. And I really appreciate just again being here because that really is a moment, at least in my life and potentially everyone else who watches this live to see, hey, this is actually a really big issue. How can I start thinking about ways I can contribute to making it better? It's been an absolute pleasure having you here today. Uh, Aya, you've been, um, again, someone who has kind of paved the way in terms of how I see Twitch now and how I see streamers. So again, you've been that uh, standard that I've set for anyone who's streaming. They have to be wholesome. They have to be grateful. And again, they have to be enjoyable, at least to say. So again, thank you so much for being here. Uh, for everyone watching this, uh, we'll be sharing all of uh, Aya's uh, details in the comments. Uh, she is very active on Twitch. Her Discord community is amazing. There's a lot of memes. There's a lot of conversations happening there. You would definitely want to be a part of that. And uh, she's also on Twitter. So we'll be sharing all of those links in the chat. Uh, Aya, any final thoughts? Um, again, no, thank you so much. And I'm really rooting for you. I'm so proud and so happy to be a part of your journey just to even witness it. I know there's many great things coming for you. So just keep on pushing through. And thank you again for allowing me to be a part of your journey on this. It's amazing to witness. And I look forward to the, the things you continue to pursue and accomplish. No pressure there. <laughs> no, no, not with even the negative expectations. It's just not even like, it's not even anything like that. It's just, I have this trust in how I feel towards you. It's, it's going to happen regardless. If it's not in this avenue, it's going to be something else. You have that type of energy and presence about you. So I have that trust in that. I believe in the intuition parts of me and I can feel that in you. So I am just really excited for whatever you decide to pursue. As long as you do it fearlessly and as much as you can towards it, move towards it, it's going to work out in your favor. And I believe it for everybody too. The more that we live authentically as ourselves, the more that we win, because the less that we deny ourselves, the things that we want and the things that we want to go for, the more that our body is going to reciprocate and say, hey, like I have confidence. I'm doing what I want to do. So you're inspiring people just by doing this too. Thank you for being a part of it. Thank you for letting me be a part of it. And you're inspiring me with that, Aya. Um, 
again, uh, a little tongue in uh, cheek for me on that part, but again, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on stream. Uh, for everyone who's watching this, we are looking for people to interview. So if you have any recommendations or any streamer that you would want us to have any conversations with, if you believe there's any streamer who can use this avenue to propel themselves or seek help, uh, let them know that Game Kale is out there for them. And uh, again, thank you all so much for tuning in. And we hope to see you again uh, soon, shortly. Peace. Yeah. Bye. Take care. And we are.